quite a few moons ago now, I had done some experiments and I decided to try a, a different way of recycling plastic, uh, which I called uh, Plastic Recycling 2.0. And it's not that it's better than a sort of typical plastic recycling like you might find on preciousplastic.com, which is a very worthwhile site to visit. But it's different. And it's quite simple. The only need equipment you need is an oven and uh, lots of weights. And uh, the weights instead of presses. <laughs> and uh, let's see. And then, of course, uh, a mold for each uh, piece, each shape of plastic that you want to make. It's a simple box mold. And uh, it's uh, basically it's for for making larger, simpler pieces, sort of like construction components, like uh, blocks of plastic, plates, boards, and beams, uh, rather than for making intricate shapes. And it doesn't uh, make uh, perfect-looking pieces. There's often bubbles in them and things, but. Uh, when you're dealing with big pieces of plastic, it uh, does give you a way to make those big pieces quite simply, and then you're not uh, when you're if you're trying to recycle, get rid of old plastic, uh, you can uh, use up quite a lot in uh, this way. Uh, so the the video is uh, my first attempt to make a particular shape, uh, quite large plate of plastic. And the things I've learned since then is that uh, you definitely want a, a temperature control on your oven. I was just plugging it in and, and the longer it went the hotter it got and uh, I've uh, ended up uh, with that mold. <laughs> I have to scrape all the burnt plastic off it. And uh, let's see, so for polypropylene, I think it might be 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 Celsius. Uh, so for the uh, temperature controller, you can, for your oven, you can buy these uh, PID temperature controllers that control it really well. Uh, they've got buttons on the front and they'll control it to within a very fine temperature range. And they come with a uh, solid state relay and a heat sink. You want the heat sink uh, for the solid state relay. Now these are a neat little piece of circuit here. They have a, a digital input from your computer signals and they go through an optical isolator and then they switch uh, a triac or back to back SCRs so you can switch uh, very high voltages and currents of AC. They've been around for about 40 years. Another thing you might want is a timer so that you can just go away and leave the whole thing and come back later when it's ready to take out of the mold. And another thing I discovered later was that uh, you can actually glue pieces of polypropylene together with a heat gun. So I had a corner break off a piece and I glued it back together and uh, I haven't tried it since then but I'm thinking that uh, especially if you had a, a, a slit type nozzle you could just go along a seam and, and glue two pieces together and wouldn't that be a, a great way to make uh, more complex pieces to, to build uh, you know boxes and various things. Uh, you probably noticed that was a, a highway behind me there, and uh, behind that is actually the ocean. I don't know. There's waves coming in. They seem kind of hard to see in the video. That's uh, Hecate Strait off the coast of uh, Haida Gwaii, the east coast. And my best solar panels are these ones up on the roof, and there's my chickens. And, uh, <laughs> and over there is my garden, 
with a big fence to keep the deer out. Now there are just a couple of other things that I should mention. The first one is that I found it convenient to cut the ropes by putting one end in a vise and using a zip disc on an angle grinder. It goes through them in no time flat. The other thing, and more important, is that uh, with this technique you don't grind up the plastic into little pellets or bits. Um, and so not only does that save you a heck of a lot of work, but you can use plastic that isn't as pure as uh, you would need for that technique. For example, the ropes off the beach have bits of sand in them. That, even if your uh, shredder could handle that, uh, the bits of sand would dull it very quickly, would dull all those blades that are going back and forth uh, against each other. So you can use all kinds of plastic that you couldn't use with with other recycling techniques that uh, would just be impractical. Uh, so, on with the actual making of a plastic plate. We now have special pieces that fit together for the edge of the mold. Plastic mold, 17 and a half inches by 21 on the inside. Weighed out some plastic to put into the mold. And then you put the top on. That twists this uh, clamp together somehow, or maybe I'll put it so you can put in screws. And uh, and what we still need is four machine screws threaded in here, or maybe even six. And those, uh, when you put the screws in, it sets how far towards the bottom that it's going to end up. So if the screws stick through by a quarter inch and you've got the right amount of plastic, you'll need a quarter inch thick sheet. If the screws stick through a half inch, you'll need twice as much plastic. And then uh, the next thing you do is put this in the oven and you put some heavy weights on here. And I thought, uh, how will I put this frame together so the sides don't fall off when it's working? Came up with uh, two coat hanger wires and two springs. Okay, so then we put in the bottom. And the bottom, because the angle pieces are a bit rounded on the inside corner, I've also rounded off on the outside corners of the bottom piece. And there it is, ready for the plastic. A, a smaller mold needed about 600 grams of plastic. This one I'm going to make it the same thickness and it's somewhat larger so I'm going to try uh, about 1.1 kilograms. There's the 923 ah, 1080 1119. We'll go with that. So, so 
then you put the plastic in the mold And then there's this bit that I so often forget uh, put a little silicon spray in it just to help it come out of the mold easier. Not that it's vital, but that's done outside anyway. <coughs> the lid piece and in that I put in uh, threaded four holes through for number 1024 bolts and put in some that are half an inch long in a piece that's about quarter inch or six millimeters thick and so it won't press right down to the bottom it'll uh, have that quarter inch left over that it won't try and push any farther. So if we've got the right amount of plastic in there, we'll have a quarter inch thick sheet after we melt it all down. And of course if we wanted a half inch thick sheet, we'd use twice as much plastic and bolts that are three quarters of an inch instead of half an inch. And of course there's a sort of main event, putting the plastic, the mold in the oven. I have some extra supports under the oven rack, because this is heavy, and according to theory it should just fit. Now, you need quite a lot of weight on top, otherwise the plastic will not compress down into the mold. So there's 10 pounds, 20 pounds, these are about 8.5, so that's uh, well over 30 pounds there. Here's the five pound one. That looks good. We'll close the oven and turn it on. Now I've put a timer on for 70 minutes. That's a little over an hour. And uh, propped a board in front of the oven door just to make sure it's closed because you have to get it up to about uh, I figure 265 Celsius is good or 260 something like that and that's 510 Fahrenheit and then it has to stay up there long enough for the plastic to flow and fill up the mold and uh, not leave the corners out so I have the oven on for 70 minutes and I checked with a heat gun that the, the uh, I should mention the oven has no controls the cord goes directly to the oven element and so I've measured it with a heat gun and it gets up to around 260 265 when after such a long time and then I leave it for another 15 minutes 
in the oven with the door closed after I unplug it. Okay, the 70 minutes of uh, oven heating time has gone by and we'll now check, take the uh, temperature gun and see if we can measure the temperature of the top of the mold. It was worth keeping the door propped up. Give it another 10 minutes. Okay, now we're over 80 minutes. We'll check the temperature again. plastic bubbling around the edges now so I think we'll call it ready to turn off and then leave it for another 15 minutes while the plastic continues to flow around okay another 15 minutes has gone by with the oven unplugged actually I forgot to put the door uh, prop back on so it's open up a little. Let's see what the temperature is. Two fifteen, two twelve, two thirteen, two eleven. I have a feeling that it hasn't flowed into the corners yet. I'll leave it for another ten minutes. It's probably the plastic's probably starting to harden, but it still seems pretty hot, and uh, then come back out. Okay, another 15 minutes has gone by now, so we'll open the oven. at 195 to 215 degrees. Plastic's still gooey. But I still have a feeling we're going to have void corners. I guess the plastic is still gooey. I'm going to leave it another 15 minutes. I'll check again. is starting to harden up. It's still quite soft, but I don't think it'll flow anymore. Got at least one corner that's now covered. I'm not sure about the other three. So notwithstanding that uh, three of the corners don't look like they got plastic in them yet, um, it's starting to cool and we were estimating the, our first guess as to how much plastic to use. So it may be just that there's not enough plastic in there to fill the whole thing. And we'll have to take it apart and find out. So we'll just uh, leave it for another 15 minutes to start cooling off and then, uh, then undo the screws so that they don't cause, uh, as the plastic shrinks, they don't cause it to crack. And then wait for it to cool completely until we can handle it. 
actually. I think I'll take the weights off now and pull it out onto the oven door so it cools faster. Ow! This one's not pretty good anymore. Undo the screws. I think I'll do that. We have screwdriver. Plastic's still gooey but hardening. Okay, it's been another 15 minutes and I've just thought of one more thing I'd like to do and that's just slice around the edge at the top so as the mold cools and the plastic shrinks it's not being held all the way around the top from the top and it can shrink in without having to break somewhere. And the plastic is still gooey enough that it's uh, coming off easily, or disconnecting, maybe I should say, from the bottom part. There. That would probably be much harder to do 10 or 20 minutes from now. Well, it's been uh, another half hour or more. It's still too hot to maybe not to touch but to hang on to but I'm kind of anxious to see what it looks like one of my springs is fine the other one has become flabby I don't know what that, how that bodes for future moldings <laughs> this method Definitely have some voids in the corners. Uh, apparently it hasn't cooled enough yet to just pop off, so I'll pry it open with a screwdriver. Didn't take much. Here we are, we have one corner that filled, and three corners that didn't. I don't see any extra thickness, I think it just wasn't quite enough plastic. 1100 grams was my first estimate. I think I'll up it to 1250 or 1300 grams. Anyway, there's a plate, some trimming around the edges, 
I need the whole thing. It's not big enough. If I want to use it in smaller pieces, I can cut it with the saw to whatever size I need. And I'll probably end up... Oh, who knows? Might just do another, do a different one and, and leave this one to use as pieces. Okay, so here's our piece. And the reason it didn't get to the corners was because there just wasn't enough plastic in the mold. So, instead of uh, 1100 grams, we'll try maybe 1300 or 1400. I'm not quite sure which is the bottom, but I think uh, the more solid side is the bottom. Got a few little stringy things here, I'm not quite sure why. A couple of little bits of green stuff, I'm not sure if they were actually polypropylene rope or not. And uh, the side with all the bubbles is the top. And uh, you do get bubbles, uh, voids in the plastic, but uh, this one probably has a lot more than most would because because of the being too thin and not enough plastic, so it didn't squash everything out. It's just still a good piece of plastic. It could be cut, for example, along here and here, and it would still be a foot by 15 inches, depending on what you want to do with it. The first try for the for the uh, this big plate mold. So the the first things I made with this technique were these uh, uh, bent shape well, wind plant blades for vertical axis wind turbine. I uh, tested these in a wind tunnel and found they seem to be a better shape than Savonius or anything else that uh, that I've seen. And then the next piece was uh, circles that are, are the right size for the wind plant blades as well. And this one, this is actually the first one, it's going to be for a water plant, so I shrunk it down to four and a half inches instead of a foot tall. If you're doing a wind plant, you'd want several blades tall. <laughs> the more the merrier. And for a water plant, water has a lot of power in a, a small size. So that's the use of the plastic recycling so far. And uh, this piece over here is to uh, create a housing for this and a housing above it for the generator all in one piece and then uh, a couple of floor and shelf and roof layers if you like the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up